hot. Phoenix is freezing to death. It's funny, things were getting so hot. Hi, this is Cass from Aussie Cass Plays and welcome back to the Rose Generation of my Not So Berry Challenge. So I just wanted to catch you guys up on a little change in Marigold's family life. Her mum has gotten married. I didn't record it. In fact, I didn't even go to the ceremony. I'm not going to lie. You know, we're not here to follow Elsa. So, and she's not actually, you know, a descendant of one of my sims like in medieval. Now she's married Felix Kendall. He is a, a bit of a snob. I don't know. I feel like he's what she wishes Phoenix would have been. And he's even a redhead, which is a coincidence, and I didn't plan that out, but it's quite funny. Together they're gonna be a power couple and change the world. I did have Marigold meet him. See? They know each other. Just not, it's not great. But then she's not super great friends with her mum either. So the kids are at school. I'm actually gonna have Phoenix. I accidentally... <laughs> I get rock star. Clicked on work from home. I didn't mean to, but I did. So we're going to the arts quarter with him and he needs to go to the arts quarter and the spice market and flirt his little heart out. It's also love day. So all of the stars are possibly aligning. So we're going to go to the art quarter first. Hello. I could bring Kara with me, but that would be counterproductive. Oh, I did take him to a club in the evening and he met a bartender who was having a slight flirtation ship with, but not a huge amount of romance. I'll show you guys when it loads. So is this sim Anna Omond? She's a snob, materialistic and creative, and she's a bartender. She was working the bar at one of the clubs in San Machino. And he said hi. Oh, she's cute. Emily Rose Benes. Oh, he does like blondes. We do know this about our boy. But honestly, I feel like Phoenix's style is anyone who will flirt back with him. So I guess we'll say hello to Emily Rose. I do think... Him on Love Day just cutting loose and flirting with everybody is the way to go. I am actually feeling like there's a bit of time pressure mainly, or she didn't she didn't take well to that at all. Let's have a quick look. The sim profile, that's the one. Anti-crush. That's the same thing Bethany got. Romantic, ambitious, and outgoing. Come on, Emily Rose. Come on, you and I, you're romantic. I'm romantic. There could be some romance. I'm just saying. Let's do a flirt and see how she reacts. She took the flirt, so, you know. Now, the reason I'm feeling some time pressure here is he had a New Year's resolution to get a significant other. He's got two days left. I don't know. What did I have to do? Brighton was a Brighton day. Brighten a Sims day at the art quarter and get romance to up to 50%. Steamy exchange already? Holy heck. Pick cause. Oh, you can change your cause. I do wonder at what point Phoenix is going to stop speaking for the trees and start speaking for other things. She's a mixologist. Ooh, she exploded all over him. It's love day and he's feeling flirty. Now, did that actually do the thing I needed? Yes. So then we need to jet to the spice market. Pulling out all of my 100 baby challenge tricks right here. I may be pushing it a little hard, honestly, but we'll see how it goes. Ooh, Emily finds him attractive. Honestly, this is just, she's flirty, he's flirty. It's love day, romance is in the air. He's like... He shouldn't really be doing this in public. He is a member of the local council. He should not be out making out with bartenders in public places. Let's see. I'm going to have this open because this is what I want. The only thing is we probably want to go more than 50% because the relationship deteriorates over time. I don't want it to like wear off while he's seducing person number three. Have we got there yet? Oh, we must be close. Come on. It said 50%. Surely. I mean, look at them making out on the street. This would be cute if he wasn't being a bit of a sleaze right now. Okay, that's ticked off. I think, because I'm doing this from a pure gameplay point of view, right? He's not drunk. I can't use that as an excuse. Basically, she's flirty and it ro feeling romantic. And he's like, you know, happy to oblige. It's just a little bit of fun, you know? Now that's gotten us pretty decently above 50. All right, he's gonna say goodbye. He's like, look, it's been lovely to hang out with you. And she's blushing and she's like, uh-huh. Who was that handsome man who came in and swept me off my feet? Then we're gonna go to the spice market. <laughs> it's spicy in the spice market. This, this is the cube up here. That's the place where he met Anna. This is pretty gross. I can't really justify his behavior right now. I'm not gonna lie. It comes down to the fact that 
I want him to hand on heart ask Kara out thinking that he's not entangled because he's thinking it was just a little bit of harmless fun and he's not cheating on anybody because technically he and Kara aren't in an actual official relationship despite the fact that they're woohooing. All right, we need to get to know a sim in the spice market. Hey, Dustin is feeling flirty too. Oh my God. Now I'd always sort of thought he might be bisexual, but so far everyone he's been attracted to has been female. That little emoji to me says he's also in the mood for some love. It's just all blokes here. Oh, they're all at the bar. Do I do it? Do I do it? I thought in my mind when he was younger that he might be bi, but I don't, I don't kind of get that energy from him. I get heterosexual male energy from him. So we can do a cheerful introduction. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Oh, hello. Anaya. She's married, I'm pretty sure, isn't she? He would care about that. Oh, I can't click on her because she's in that stupid thing. Hey, ha can I get to know you? Because I need to, oh, he's unflirty, mean and gloomy. Then why on earth was he thinking flirty thoughts when he sh first showed up. <laughs> Why is it a picture of an ant? Distant? Because it's got the word ant in it. Phoenix thinks that Dustin is distant and he thinks Phoenix is emotionally expressive. I mean, that is true after a fashion. Get to know a sim at the spice market. Secret talents of Dustin Broke. I'd like to get to know him. Also, a cute lady just showed up. Alert, alert, cute lady, alert. Happy hour, hello, let me buy you a drink. Let's do a flirty introduction. What did that symbol mean? Does that mean he finds her attractive? Let's see, I think that that symbol, yeah, here we go. He thinks Mariko is making his heart race. Oh my God. Let's see what she thinks of us. We both think the other is emotionally expressive. Oh my gosh, it's Marigold's birthday. You dog, Phoenix. You absolute dog. I don't know if she's single. I don't know. Subasa Nakagawa. Is that you? No, that's Akira. Oh, Miko Ojo is here. She's a politician too. She's a colleague. She's a social justice worker. Spice festivals in town. That's good timing. How come we're not getting to know people? Also, she's sad. She's probably not a good choice. How come none of my get to knows or no? I am in the spice market. Or maybe I have to be actually over here. Look at him. He's feeling he had a breathtaking encounter with Mariko. There are heart pounding moments, but this one is heart stopping. Well, you should probably see a cardiac surgeon or something, my friend. I don't know. Mariko's just standing. Oh, Miko's just standing out here. It's like, hey, don't I know you from work? Let's sweet talk her. Compliment her appearance. Honestly, Phoenix, this could get you done under some fairly strict harassment laws because you outrank her and you work together. Does she, she, I mean, she's like kissing her phone and stuff. And because she's a social justice worker and he's a council person. Oh, hello. Oh, wait, Miko finds him attractive. That's actually even better. Like he's a council person. She's a social justice worker. So like they wouldn't be in the same office. It's like they're both in the broad political career, like, but in the same way a lobbyist and a politician are in the same broad kind of career. She's leaving. She's leaving Phoenix. Go, go, go. She's interesting. What does she think of you, though? Honestly, that's the bigger question. Let's open that sim profile. She has an anti-crush. I mean, so did the last person. I think it's the hot-headed trait that's causing it. We can first kiss. Well, obviously we should because uh, we need to first kiss a bunch of sims. So he is shaking my head. There is something fun about playing a, a, a bad sim, but in my mind, I guess it's because I've raised him from a child. I'm like, is he a bad sim though? But this, what he's doing right now is pretty bad. Oh, she's an innocent personality archetype. No. Oh, we're lagging. My sims are lagging. Hello? Oh, to be fair, that was a mod interaction. That's probably why. He's making out with someone with an innocent personality archetype. Now, it is technically Marigold's birthday, but I only got the notification this evening, so I'm actually thinking that it should be okay for us to age her up in the morning. If I were a sim, I'd be interested in this sim. I'm just saying. There's the really cute one, though. That's the one that he really wanted to hook up with. She is married, though, and this one isn't. Say this one. This is like the 100 baby challenge, but we're not trying to make babies. Oh my goodness, that wasn't even me, was it? Okay, I'm just going to have to accept that Phoenix is currently not in a good place, not behaving well. Doing that young man thing where he's playing the field and 
And he's like, well, if everybody's consenting, I don't see the problem. All of which is fine, except that Kara is not consenting to this situation. Oh, and he's, oh, ah, Phoenix is freezing to death. It's funny, things were getting so hot. Let me just get him changed. I just want to get this up a little bit further. And then he just needs to kiss seven more spoons. Or oh, he's resolution due. He's feeling tense because his resolution is due. Go pee, dude. If she's still around when you come out, we'll think about it. What I'm actually thinking about is having him. If I'm going to have him be a dog, I'm going to have him be a dog. Something exciting going on with these plants. Hello? Hello? Did the cute girl leave? Oh, no, she's still over here. I'm going to have him ask her to be his girlfriend. Again, in his mind, he's probably, you, I put warm clothes on you, stop complaining. In his, oh, that's almost done, else time, make the most of these final days. Phoenix is about to ask someone who's not Kara to be his girlfriend and stuff. And I'm too busy fixating on this message. Right, he completed his resolution. He didn't want to be single forever. It's an awkward encounter, that's fine. Oh, she's blowing him kisses now. She dislikes him. She doesn't like his vibe. But she was, like, obviously totally overwhelmed by him. Oh, he should get promoted. Awesome. Uh, he needs to get to know one more sim. Now, if you guys completely disagree with me deciding to just embrace the, the spirit of dog in Phoenix for now, if you guys think I should have him actually be, like, breaking up with people and getting together with other people in a monogamous way, let me know. He's not in a great place right now in terms of his thoughts on relationships and stuff. He's like, he's footloose and fancy free. His girlfriend's coming up to give him a rose. I mean, to be fair, she's been quite intense too. Okay, we've done everything we need to do. I mean, Kara actually hasn't called him. I find that quite interesting. I wonder if Kara thought he'd call her and she's sitting at home wondering why her boyfriend hasn't contacted her on love day. All right, so we've gotten home. Fine, she can go pee. So I'm actually going to have... I think this is fair. I'm actually going to have Cyan argue. Accuse of being an alien. Not in an actual genetic alien sense, but in a way that he's behaving in an inhuman way to Kara. Maybe that kind of argument. She's like asking him about Kara. I think this is fair. I think she quite likes Kara and she's going to be like, look, I'm not telling you how to live your life, but I do think the way, the way you're behaving right now is very disrespectful to Kara. Now, where did Miko go? Oh, she's actually peeing now. We'll wait for her to come out. I'm having him invite her to stay the night. And then he's going to take her down to his little love nest downstairs. Be a very irresponsible adult. I know I'm telling him to do it, but it's the challenge rules, man. This is Kayla's fault. She invented the not so berry challenge. I blame Lil Simsy. There was also someone else she co-wrote it with. And to be fair, the whole point of this challenge is to get you to do things maybe you wouldn't otherwise do. Oh, she's... Wait, oh, no, Marigold just walked in on dad and Miko. Oh, Marigold, I'm so sorry. Go to bed. Your dad will buy you a really big birthday present in the morning to make up for what just happened to you. I'm so sorry, Marigold. All right, Marigold appears to have put from her mind the trauma of what just happened. Yeah, he hasn't quite forgotten. And what's up with Miko? Oh, she's crying about my dog too propose no i mean we could leave miko at the altar for kara that possibility is there maybe that's the road we should go down although leaving kara or miko at the altar to me feels like kicking a puppy i had ruby go for a jog to clear her mind because she was feeling very sad about love day she's got a present for marigold already i just need to quickly sort something out for phoenix i figured out what to get her so what i'm gonna do i bought all three but i'm only gonna give her one because, you know, I'll just drag the other two across. He's giving her a stack of books. So we'll give her Rocket Science Volume 1. But we're imagining he's bought her all three. He's like, look, I know you're really into this Marigold. Apologies for what happened last night. She's probably twitching slightly when she sees Miko walk through. Who's come up to cry about the dog again. Rent you! That's so cute. Look at her. Yeah, Rocket Science books, Dad. Thanks. That's awesome because I figured it's something she can carry in her inventory, but at the same time, it's something that I think is appropriate to her as opposed to the kind of random stuff that was on Plopsy and stuff, you know. He's in here making Marigold's birthday cake. I don't want to take too long to make it because I feel like she's going to age up on her own. So what I'm going to do is quickly have everyone get dressed. I'm actually going to invite over her parents or her mum and her new stepdad. 
Hello. <gasps> Wait, what? What was that message? Kara sent a message. Kara sent a message and then I didn't see what it was. I have to go check. Give me a sec. I'm going to go check the footage. So I'm sure I've put it up on screen by now, but it said, congrats. I heard you guys started dating. So she did hear about it. And the thing is that he's not in a relationship with Kara. Maybe she knew it was just friends with benefits. Maybe she's trying to make herself feel feel better by acting like she's cool with it. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. It was just kind of not my read of her that she would be okay with that. But, oh, Miko's leaving. She's like, thanks for hanging out with me. Okay. So I guess Kara knew. I mean, in a way, I'm glad that he's not, like, breaking Kara's heart. But I'm really sad that he's breaking Miko's heart. I'm not as attached to Miko as I am to Kara, so maybe that's a good thing. I still am getting OTP vibes from Kara. Now, I actually would like Ruby to give her present to Marigold. She actually wrote a book of poetry. It's poor quality. It's called What is Life? Because she's a teenage girl. She's going to give that to her niece. Feels a bit like a double-edged sword. Like, on the one hand, Ruby's probably very proud of it. The flip side is she probably is like, well, I don't want to spend money on her, you know. Because bear in mind, Ruby was, like, enraged at Marigold in the last part. The kitty wants to play. Does she like it? She does. She's probably like, wow, she never gives me anything or shows me any kind of attention. Let's see if Felix has shown up. Look at this guy. This is like if Phoenix Berry had a completely different personality. All right, I'm going to get Marigold to age up, I guess. Wait, you're aging up with the plate in your hand? Is that a hunk of cheese? Oh, she put it down. Happy birthday, pretty girl. I can't wait to see what she looks like. I'm super excited. Oh, she's gone. She's out the back. She may or may not be aging up. Ooh. Okay. All right. She needs to be clumsy and ambitious. I think at this point she has access to all of the traits. So we might go with clumsy. I think she's still dreaming head in the clouds style rather than being ambitious and driven. She needed to be a nerd brain. So we'll put on that, obviously. Uh, I don't know where the glasses came from and stuff. And the oh, she's, what a hot mess. I'll take care of that real quick and then we'll have a look at what she looks like. She's actually really cute. All right. Well, I'm going to give her a makeover and I'll touch base with you guys when I'm done. Right, you guys, that took me a really long time. Again, because I messed around with makeup, which isn't something I normally do. And I wasn't 100% sure of, like, clumsy loner, whether makeup was going to be a thing. But then I also thought Ruby would take her in hand because Ruby cares about that kind of thing. And I've done very light touch makeup other than the ridiculous eyelashes that I put on all my sims. I just like them. They're more visible from a distance, that's all. And I've also used the cute little uh, Plum Bob Tea Society space-themed earrings because I didn't have any yellow t-shirts for adult frame sims that I could use that was space. She's gone the low key space earrings on all her outfits. So I'll just show you guys really quickly. So that's her first everyday outfit. Then we have this one, which is mostly courtesy of Clumsy Alien, the CC creator, which frankly seemed appropriate. We have this. I confess I bought a casket I'd never had before, but I have now. I bought the fashion district one, like the Indian style clothing one. A lot of the clothes I actually think would work really well for medieval as well, which was part of it. I just felt like spoiling myself. I'll show you the earrings real quick. This pair she's wearing in most of her outfits, and I thought they might be a present from Cyan. She may have gotten them all for her. This is her work out wear and this girl is ripped I didn't touch these sliders I didn't touch them at all I swear to you she worked out like she had a, quite a high motor skill so this is her sleepwear I gave her super messy hair because you know I was feeling it that's her party wear it's very cute not as much yellow on that one but I like to mix it up sometimes this is her swimwear see what I mean abs girls got abs I've given her this as a hot weather wear just because I wanted to get some use. She actually, this was her party wear shirt that she aged up in, you guys will remember. So I kept it, moved it to hot weather, and then added some different pants and stuff. This is her other hot wear outfit, hot weather outfit. I think she might be a little bit body conscious at the moment. Like she's wearing a lot of baggy clothes. The only one that's a bit of an exception is this. But even then, she's still got the vest. Or maybe she just really likes baggy clothes. I'm not sure. But she's definitely gone for that aesthetic. This is her first winter wear outfit and that's her second winter wear outfit so I think she's a stunner so here's a little marigolded game oh my goodness she's really pretty 
The first thing she's like, I'm going to go see Grandad. Oh, Donnell's out here. He must have known she came to age up outside. I do have a little bit of money because I went through the household inventory and sold everything. Oh, kitty. Yay. I feel so sad. He's going to pass away probably just after we move or maybe just before. If I have to stick around until Monday, he may actually pass away before we leave, which in a way is probably a good thing. Poor Cyan's in here like having to make small talk to these two. Oh, he's angry. Oh, he started feeling hot at it as soon as Elsa walked in with her new husband. Let's do a cheerful introduction because you are a politician. He's, he's being polite. So he's a materialistic foodie snob. I'll put your cheese back in the fridge, shall I, Marigold? I'm actually going to finish this part here, I think. I love Marigold. I What I'm going to do, it feels weird playing through the weekend, not taking advantage of the fact that Phoenix is at home to have him flirt with people because he needs to kiss seven more sims. I guess that he isn't in a super huge rush. I don't remember what the fourth level is. One of them was like having had eight girlfriends or something though. So I do feel like he needs to get cracking with that. I don't know. Like I kind of want to move these guys out. Like I'm really keen to move them out. I can't really move them out until we earn a little bit more money. We probably need like one more day of income, I think. Let's see what he thinks of Kara's new partner. Phoenix thinks Felix is strong-minded and Felix thinks Phoenix is responsible. That's actually kind of fair. I mean, he did take custody of their daughter as a teen. To be fair, that was mostly his parents, but Felix won't necessarily know that, right? I didn't mean for her to marry a redheaded redhead named Felix whose name sounds like Phoenix. I genuinely didn't, but now I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, oh, Elsa. It's fine. I hope you guys like Little Marigold's Makeover. Sure, Phoenix, you can like video gaming, that's fine. If you've enjoyed, please like and subscribe, you know the drill. Don't forget to wash your hands. I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching.